best in daughters, sisters, and wives. They're gonna change our lives. Big women, big girls. They'll make a better world. Invest in her. And now here's your host, Catherine Gray. Welcome to the Invest in Her podcast series. I'm your host, Catherine Gray. And we're so happy to have you with us today to talk about, you know, empowering women through funding. That's what uh, we are all about. That's what this platform's about. And today I have on two very special guests because they are my co-producers for the She Angels TV series, which came out of a pitch fest to help fund and mentor women. And uh, they are extraordinary in their own right. They are award-winning film producers. We're going to talk about all of the amazing projects that they are working on for the greater good, uh, both past and present. Uh, Please give a welcome to Kai Dickens and Mercedes Kane, my co-producers. Hi there. Hello. Thanks for having us on, Catherine. How are you? Of course, Mercedes, you're in Chicago. And Kai, right here near me in Burbank. That's right. Yeah. So I just want to um, give the audience an idea of uh, the amazing projects that you work on. You know, we we all came together to join forces for the She Angels Project, which we're pitching as a TV series as an offshoot of having done the uh, Pitch Fest. And um, you uh, both are always working on, you know, socially conscious films. And I want to talk about uh, what some of those have been, why you're involved with the She Angels Project, and uh, just give the audience an idea of, of your background. So Kai, want to start with some things that you've been working on and, and why you're involved with She Angels? Yeah, sure. Um, well, She Angels felt like a great fit just for the moment. I think if you're a woman in this world, regardless of what sector you work in, Um, It feels as though things are a little bit more difficult often to get funding, to get noticed, to get your voice out there, to get your work validated. And for all these amazing business ideas that are on the sidelines that could one day literally change the world, help save the environment, create products that are needed. um, You know, it's the same as anything. You know, women are getting uh, much less funding uh, than men. And to create a show about that in a meaningful, compelling way felt like a natural segue um, just for, you know, as an extension of work that I've been doing and Mercedes has been doing, and obviously Catherine, it's your life work, and it's always the best to um, to involve yourself with good people, solid people with a real vision. So, um, well, that's where I feel so grateful to be working with the two of you. Uh, what I was so impressed about and wanted to collaborate on She Angels was because of the dynamic things that you guys are working on both in the past, your award-winning films, and the things you're working on currently. Uh, Mercedes, could you share with us some of the projects that you have been doing and and have done in the future? Sure, of course. Yeah, um, so I've directed three feature-length documentary films, the latest of which, Breakfast at Ina's, is on Amazon Prime now, if anyone wants to take a look. (laughs) Um, And then Kai and I... What's that one about? What is that? Yeah, it's interesting, actually, because um, Ina Pinkney, she was a restaurateur in Chicago for about 36 years and really kind of built this community. And I would say that she was a fun, you know, a founder and an entrepreneur kind of before her time, before women really were able to do that. And so she had a really interesting life. Um, So it's really the last 30 days of her restaurant closing. We kind of, you know, weave in and out of her history and story. Yeah. So she's pretty amazing. Yeah. I know you've worked on some other award-winning films. Uh, Tell me about a couple of the other ones. Um, Well, I was going to say Kai and I have a few docu-series in the works right now as well, you know, obviously including She Angels. And then I'm working on a film right now, which is called Art and Pep, which is really the story of Chicago's LGBTQ movement through the lens of this 46-year love story of two of the men who are really behind so much of the progress that's been made in one of the country's most progressive states, which is Illinois. Um, so that's kind of exciting. And I know Kai, you have an exciting project happening right now as well. Yeah, well, yeah. that and that the both of those sound great, Mercedes. Oh, I can't wait you. to see them both. And uh, yeah, Kai, I, I know you have something really special too. You're working on uh, about Sally Ride, right? Yeah, um, the you know there was a class, uh, NASA's class of 1978 was the first class to allow women, 
um, wow. into its ranks. And there were six women in that class, and one was Sally Ride, who ended up being the first American woman in space. Um, but what's kind of cool is her sister was also groundbreaking. You know, her sister was one of the first LGBTQ ordained ministers. And Sally, as many people know, came out, you know, in her obituary. Um, but, you know, all that besides the point, these two women were breaking down doors and doing unbelievable things in two totally different realms um, that was well beyond their years. So, you know, we're, we're excited because next week we're going to be interviewing Gloria Steinem about what it was like in 1978 and the pressure, especially that was on Sally's shoulders, all these female astronaut shoulders to be everything to everyone at a moment when people were really um, trying to figure out if women could be in these you know, male spaces, succeed in these male spaces, if it was infringement on our culture, if it was infringement on family values, if it was infringement on the entire social system. And you know, Sally became America's sweetheart and rose to the occasion with such grace and charm um, but it was not easy. And a lot of these women who've come before us have certainly paved the road. Um, and it's a big passion project for me. Uh, you know, Sally was my hero when I was younger. Um, oh, that's so cool. I mean, what a fantastic opportunity. I mean, this is what I love about you too. And that's why I wanted to partner with you all, uh, for the She Angels TV project is I love, um, you know, it was kismet how we all came together. Uh, I, somebody had referred me to a conference in Chicago and then through the chat room, we happened to connect. I saw, hey, there's these women creating this, you know, production company for the greater good. And then finally, when we connected, we realized, wow, you know, She Angels is really a project we all felt, you know, from our heart was an important one to uh, work on together. And I'm so, so grateful to have the two of you. You, you both uh, are exceptionally talented. And, you know, I, I think when women come together and, you know, uh, you know, make great things, you know, we are unstoppable. And so I'm, I'm so happy that we are aligned on our vision of, you know, helping to fund and mentor women and, and help really solve this, uh, not only national, but global issue of the underfunding of women. Uh, as I've mentioned in previous show uh, about how men really get 85 to 95% of all the funding and how are we going to change that? And we're hoping that, you know, the platform that we're creating together uh, is a platform to help educate women and people about how underfunded women are and how we can solve that problem. And so I'm super excited to, to be working with the two of you, exceptional women. Likewise. Right back at you. Well, uh, let me ask you this. Uh, let's tell people a little bit about uh, the She Angels Project. Um, Kai, you want to fill us in a little bit um, about the vision for it? Um, I know that we've been working on, it's been like a work in progress and it's always changing and COVID has definitely yeah. uh, made it even more relevant and, and changed our perspective. Uh, I'd like to you to explain to the audience a little bit about it. Well, certainly, you know, and there's been, like you said, many iterations and one of the most, um, I think, fun things about working in television is that you constantly have to be flexing and molding a show to meet the current moment. And this is a very unique moment. Um, but through the process, we found three she angels that we wanted to feature, um, Tracy Gray, um, uh, Zandra, and then obviously Stacy. And they are, you're going to be having them each on your show. And all of them have founded their own angel networks. They spend a, an, an awful lot amount of time uh, investing in women, looking at decks, figuring out how to grow and expand and give young emerging businesses a chance, especially with women at the helm. Uh, one of the things that these women say that I love and it's so important is one, you know, that so often female founders, their idea, their invention, their business will fall flat to, a, to the ears of a panel of all men uh, funders because they will don't see the necessity in whatever product's being pitched. Often you have to understand the necessity or understand the product or the maker to really see the value in it. And that's why it's so critical that female um, funders are often in the picture. But beyond that, uh, these three incredible angel investors, our she angels that we're featuring in the show, Stacey, Tracy, and Zandra, are very passionate about the fact that not just do you know, women need to get uh, funded, but women with means need to get into the game of funding. And it should be like a book club in a way where you can get together, you can re review decks, you can find people and, and have the benchmarks in which you want to see them succeed. And in doing such, we can create a 
whole universe of funders and it doesn't have to be a lot of money. Women with 500, 1,000, 10,000, whatever it is laying around can be a part of this equation. And if we have more funders and as well as founders, that's really gonna be how we reset the economy um, in a more equitable way. Uh, but just one quick note on the current COVID crisis. You know, we had this whole vision for how this was gonna go. And after the COVID, you know, after COVID kind of reshook everyone's life or shook everyone's life, uh, we had conversations with our she angels and they each said that they see this as a very unique moment in time to re-envision how the entire economy looks and who's at the table and who has a place at the table and why. And they see themselves as being integral in that. And we are excited to follow that journey as they are on that task. Absolutely. And I love the equation uh, that we've been using. It's like the new book club. Hey, instead of going to a group of women and reading a book, go to a group of women that are investing in uh, entrepreneurs, female entrepreneurs, and learn about the incredible ideas and projects and inventions they have. What could be more exciting than that, really? And having an opportunity to invest in them and be a part of that. It doesn't take a big investment. A lot of people might... Uh, think that that's a barrier, but it's not. When you collectively put your investments together, you can make magic happen. And it's not even just the money. It's uh, having people believe in them. I've learned that from the She Angels Pitch Fest, where our recipients of the funding have said, just as invaluable has been the mentorship and people believing in their product uh, or invention. You know, there's nothing like having super successful investor women say, yeah, we believe in you. And to what you just said, uh, it's so important to have women at that decision-making table because men don't always understand or get the products. Not to say that we aren't all for men getting behind their women, uh, their, you know, uh, their wives, their mothers, their daughters, their sisters and friends. We are for that. But women also have to play a huge part in solving this issue by actually getting involved. And these uh, angel groups popping up around the country and that we wanna perpetuate through the show are just one way for them to learn how to become an angel investor. And that's why this TV show platform is so incredibly important. I don't think there's been one like it before. Would, would you agree, Mercedes? Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, I think it's interesting just kind of adding on to what you've been saying. You know, one of um, our she angels, Tracy, she talks a lot about, you know, bias, investment bias, and how, you know, in the angel investing world, the bias is largely white men who have the money. And so white men get the money. And what I love about our she angels is that, you know, their bias is females and females of color. And so that just really changes the game. And what I also think is important about the TV show aspect of it is that little girls at home are going to see people like them who are not only out there who have a dream, who are making their businesses happen, but are also supporting one another, you know, and financially through mentorship, you know, kind of lifting each other up. So I think that's, you know, it has a big, huge potential to change the world. Like Absolutely. we say, you know, not, not just reality TV, but reality transformed. I love that. And the two of you also uh, have uh, coined it. Uh, uh, Orange County isn't just for housewives anymore. <laughs> I love that because these girls are from Orange County in the LA area that are on the show that are our investors. And, you know, we always say too, that there's plenty of founders. We just need more funders. And that's really the premise of this is how do we educate women to be uh, investors? And it's a very exciting realm for them to come into. You know, uh, we've also, um, in conjunction to the Pitch Fest and the TV series that we're pitching, uh, also have a foundation. And the foundation is all about, um, the nonprofit is about getting behind female founded uh, nonprofits that are giving uh, to women, uh, resources, mentorship, and funding. Uh, and so um, everything we're doing, uh, one thing serves the other. And that's why this TV platform is so important. Uh, what made you decide, uh, both of you, to get involved with the She Angels Project? What, what was it that spoke to your heart about it? I mean, I think for me, it's a lot of what we said already, but, you know, just the importance of women lifting women up and, you know, changing the landscape of what startups look like and what, you know, angel investment looks like. Um, you know, only I think 2% of venture capital dollars are going to women right now. 
And so if we can be part of what makes that number go up and also kind of show that happening and, and tell it, you know, tell the story in a way that is interesting and, you know, really shares the narrative and the hardships and the successes of these women, I think that's something I just really wanted to get behind. Yeah. And I think there's, you know, it's like, there's every, you know, there's so many inequities right now. Right. And, and Mercedes and myself, you know, we work in visual film and television and it's like, how do you affect change? The change that needs to be done in this medium. Well, you highlight the stories that can affect that change and that can inspire others. And, and it's really about radical inclusion. Like you can't just sit back and be like, oh man, I wish there were more female founders and I wish they were getting more, more money and I wish that more people supported black businesses and I wish that more women ran for office. You know, there's, I wish that LGBT parents were treated better. Whatever it is, you have to be completely on the forefront of making that change. And it has to be radical and it has to be purposeful and it has to be intentional. And it's not gonna happen by just trying to talk to male investors about it or big banks or smaller banks. I mean, you have to get the females in the room making the decisions, changing the course of how things are happening. And this show is all about that tangible change. You know, and what I really like too is that, you know, I do see some investment shows out there. Uh, they tend to still uh, invest mostly in men. Uh, uh, and, and also too, um, they're basically having people come in and pitch, but they're not really show, pulling the curtain back about, you know, how to pitch and, and what people are really looking for. And I think that's real, where uh, women really are at a disadvantage that um, they, they really don't know uh, or have the uh, circle of people around them like men do to uh, show them the ropes of how do you invest to a venture capital firm and how do you invest to angel investors? What are they looking for? And, you know, we just need that support system. And I think that's why this show is so crucial too. And um, also to, you know, enlighten the public uh, of how, uh, inequitable it is you know most most people don't even realize how underfunded women are and you know we all say and it says on our website you know the dalai lama says the western women will save the planet and i really do believe that but not without funding and so yeah. this is why it's so crucial that we have more women at the decision making table that we are mentoring women how to pitch and how to be great um presenters for investment opportunities. And that's really what this show is all about. And I don't think there's anything out there quite like it. And that's why we're so enthralled with getting this on air. And, and that brings me to our next obstacle about getting on air. And that's what a lot of people have uh, is really great programming and ideas, but it's mostly men decision-making in Hollywood about what goes on the air. And therefore, it's, you know, sometimes a challenge to convince uh, men uh, that uh, women need a show about uh, the underfunding of women and how we're going to fix that issue and how the audience can participate in this exciting movement. Uh, and, and, and so that's our challenge, too. Wouldn't you two agree? Yeah, yeah, although I do think that's changing a lot right now, um, that a lot of women well, are kind of at the helm and making decisions and making programming decisions. I think the world is waking up a lot for the better. Um, yes. You know, and that there are a lot of people of color and women and, you know, people are realizing that the audience isn't all white men, you know, for any product or program. So I do think change is, is coming which is yeah, good for us. Because our program addresses that women of any age and any ethnicity uh, can be a successful entrepreneur given the right uh, mentorship, funding, resources. And so we really are addressing that uh, inequality of all types of women have this opportunity, no matter what age they are, whether they're super young or, you know, over 50, you know, that there's no parameters of when you can become a successful entrepreneur if you have a community and village around you to learn from and cheer you on. Yeah. Absolutely. I think the other thing too is, you know, the, the value that could be had, like I think of Stacey Feinberg, who's one of our she angels, right? And she always talks about how exclusionary a lot of the language is around investing and angel investing and, and all of these things that have often kept women on the sidelines thinking, I don't have the education to do this. I don't have the know-how. And she shoots right from the hip and she's never didactic about it and just explains, okay, this word actually means this. This means that. 
And, you know, we're with her just for a little bit of time. And it's like, oh my gosh, all of this feels so much more clear now. And I, I can't wait to give that gift to women of every age out there. Um, so they don't feel daunted and overwhelmed by the thoughts of portfolios and investments and, and all those things that have often felt like it happens only in New York if you're of a certain income level. Right. And, and that's what I think our hope is for the show is to be a platform that says uh, you can do this and inspire women to see other women helping other women and say, not only can they do this as an entrepreneur, but to watch and say, oh, my gosh, I want to become an angel investor. I want to be part of this movement that helps change the inequity of the underfunding of women. And like you said, Mercedes, the good thing is, is that it is moving in the right direction of having more people uh, in decision making uh, places in Hollywood and elsewhere, but we still have a long way to go. And the obvious, uh, uh, you know, outcome of that is that we are still super underfunded. And so I'm super excited that our audience listening now and, and those that will be following us and becoming part of either viewing the television show that's forthcoming uh, that we are working on uh, or being part of the sheangelsfoundation.org uh, that all of these things give women an opportunity to come be part of the solution. Mm -hmm. So thank you both so much for being on today. Do you have any closing comments about uh, She Angels and being a part of this project? I mean, I would encourage people if they have an idea to go to the She Angels website because, you know, we are going to be still reviewing contestants for the show, but also the next pitch fest whenever it's greenlit, you know, or, or, and, or the one after that. So there's always opportunities to get involved and hopefully be connected with funders or to be a participant on the show. And we love, the three of us love looking over great ideas because um, like I said, we are still casting for the show as well as for um, the pitch festivals in the future. Absolutely. They can come to sheangels.com or sheangelsfoundation.org. Uh, we also, of course, the podcast uh, is tied into those websites, which is investinherpodcast.com. And Mercedes? Yeah, I'm just I'm just looking forward to making this happen. So I'm excited to share, talk about it, and hopefully let's get it out there into the world soon, sooner than later. Let's do it. All mm -hmm. right, ladies, thank you so much for taking the time. I know you're busy and uh, working on great projects and so happy that we're able to come together and work on something for the greater good. Awesome. So make it a great day, everybody. Thanks for tuning in and remember to invest in her. Take care. Thanks, Catherine. Our theme music was created and produced by Lindsay Tomasic.